The Bible is a brutally honest book. It spares no feelings. It has no concern for political correctness. It does not care if someone is offended by its messages. It deliberately calls out the vulgar actions of depraved persons, yet with words that are delicate enough for even children to read. It labels sin as sinful, and it announces its condemnation. It does not pretend that all is well with the world, but instead it identifies the world's problems as the products of rebellion against God. Indeed, the Bible does not sugarcoat, soft soap, mollify, placate, coddle, pacify, or tell white lies or half-truths, but rather it boldly speaks the whole truth without apology. In our time, many people are not accustomed to receiving such honest truth. They are easily offended, believing that they should never have to hear anything that makes them uncomfortable or causes them displeasure. This is nothing new, for ancient Judah likewise developed an ear for smooth words and lies that were easy to hear. Scripture describes them in Isaiah 30, verses 9-11. through 11. For this is a rebellious people, false sons, sons who refuse to listen to the instruction of the Lord, who say to the seers, You must not see visions, and to the prophets, You must not prophesy to us what is right, speak to us pleasant words, prophesy illusions, get out of the way, turn aside from the path, let us hear no more about the Holy One of Israel. Likewise in the New Testament, Scripture gives the following warning about those who will close their ears to God's Word in 2 Timothy 4, verses 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires and will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside to myths. By the modern sensitivities of our society, People want to hear only pleasant words that conform to their wishes. So then, if a man wants to believe he is a woman, then everyone is expected to respect his delusion and call him a woman. If anyone wants to deny the existence of God, then everyone is expected to keep silent about the Holy One, lest the unbeliever be offended. If anyone wants to think that he has an inheritance in the kingdom of God, even though he is an unrepentant sinner, then Christians are expected to hold their tongues and let him believe a lie. It is no wonder, then, that so many people reject the truth of God's Word. If they cannot handle that which is unmistakably true by the general revelation of nature, such as the existence of God, the beginning of life at conception, or the fact that God has created us unchangeably as male and female, then how will they handle the spiritual truth of God's special revelation in the Scriptures? Jesus said it himself in John 3, verse 12. If I told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Nevertheless, the truth of God's Word must be told, regardless of whether people want to believe it. There is not both a time for truth and a time for lies, but rather there is only a time for truth.